the lining of the uterus is called the endometrium. It is here that the fetus sticks and grows to form the baby. So it is very important that the endometrium has adequate blood flow to support the growing embryo. I am Dr. Sneha, gynecologist and fertility specialist and in this video we will be discussing about the thin endometrium and what is the reason for it and what is the treatment. So why do you get thin endometrium? Sometimes some women have thin endometrium and they do not know. This may be because they may get pregnant naturally also. However, when you go for assisted reproductive techniques, we do scans to monitor your lining of the uterus which is the endometrium. If it is thin, then it becomes an issue. So what are the reasons why the endometrium may be thin? It may be due to Sinicae which are the endometrial adhesions. This is called Asherman syndrome. This may be due to a prior surgery on the uterus or it may be due to an infection in the uterus which causes these adhesions or stickiness inside the endometrium and this causes a thin endometrium. Sometimes even having tuberculosis in the uterus may be a cause for thin endometrium and as a woman ages the endometrium tends to become thin because the follicular phase is the phase when the endometrium is growing. This phase is shortened in older women because of which the endometrium may become thin. Also when we do assisted reproductive techniques, when we are monitoring a woman for her cycles and we see that the endometrium is thin, we may have to resort to other treatment options. Sometimes using contraceptions which contain progesterone may also thin the endometrium. During an embryo transfer cycle, we may prepare the endometrium in two ways. One is by giving estrogen from exogenous where we give exogenous estrogen. Estrogen is the hormone which grows the endometrium. So it is very much required. So when we give it from outside, it may be in different forms. It may be in a tablet form or a transdermal form where we ask you to put estrogen on the skin or it may be insertion of estrogen pellets into the vagina. So these are the different ways in which estrogen is given and we monitor for the growth of the lining. The other one is by giving endogenous estrogen by stimulating the production of endogenous estrogen which is the estrogen coming from your body. It may be as part of your natural cycle where your eggs are growing, they get released and in this process the estrogen is also coming or it may be by giving certain tablets and injections to induce ovulation inside your body so as to grow the endometrium. So once the endometrium is of adequate thickness and estrogen priming of the endometrium has happened, this is followed by a progesterone dose for about 6 days after which a day 5 blastocyst is put back into the uterus. So certain things we check if the endometrium is thin. What are the implications? Sometimes an endometrial thickness of less than 8 mm in fresh cycle and less than 7 mm in a frozen embryo transfer cycle have shown to decrease the implantation rate and increase the miscarriage rate. So to avoid this, we usually aim for a very good endometrium, a thick endometrium. But however, this does not mean that all women have to get this endometrium. There is a threshold, there is a limit to which a woman can grow her lining. So if we feel that that is the best the woman is going to grow, then we have done transfers and got pregnancies as well. It also doesn't mean if the lining is thin less than 7 millimeters, there is no chance of having a pregnancy. It may be that the woman tends to grow that endometrium and it is good enough to support the fetus. However, we may have to do additional tests to rule out that there is no other problem. One of it is the hysteroscopy where we put the camera inside the uterus and see if there is any scar tissue adhesions in the uterus. If these are there, we try to cut it and correct it in the same sitting. After this, we get a good endometrial lining also. And there have been new technologies, new techniques which have been coming nowadays. It may be the use of platelet-rich plasma or the PRP or growth hormone which is injected inside the uterus to favor the growth of the endometrium and achieve adequate thickness. However, these are experimental and need further research. So when we see a thin endometrium, we may have to change protocols. It is said that endogenous estrogen produces a better lining. So if we are not getting with exogenous estrogen, we may tend to use endogenous estrogen. 
or sometimes even vaginal penigram may be useful. So this increases the blood flow to the uterus and helps in the growth of a better lining. And occasionally, you know, certain supplements may be useful. It may be vitamin C or vitamin E, which increase the blood flow to the uterus or the use of ecosprin, which is aspirin or the use of low molecular weight heparin may also be indicated to improve the lining of the uterus. So what is it that you can do to improve your lining? Maybe you can do regular exercises, eat healthy, keep the toxins away from your body and all these will help in building up a good endometrium and improve your chances of IVF success.